see my sister on the other side. I see my brother on the other side. I see my family on the other side. So I need a bridge to the other side. I see my hometown on the other side. I see my friends on the other side. I see my country on the other side. So I need a bridge to the other side. And if you read out your hand I can grab it I just know but for me to reach it your other hand must let go other side I see my ticket on the other side oh I see it all on the other side so I need a bridge to the other side so I need a bridge to the other side I need a bridge mm -hmm. I met up with alt-country rock band frontman and singer-songwriter Bo Jennings at the Prairie House in Norman, an eccentric product of some architect's vision in the 60s, a guy named Herb Green, Bo said. It's been described by some as modernist and some as retro-futuristic. Other folks say it looks like a giant chicken. We took a seat inside, traded on our shared love of Bob Dylan, argued over inspiration versus discipline, talked about how it all started and what making it means. Bo's got the insight of a man who's been on a journey, paid attention on the drive. He carries the awareness of a drifter who took in the sunrises and burned them good to memory. I didn't start playing music until a friend loaned me a guitar in, this was my senior year of high school. Um, and I didn't even realize I wanted to play, but he loaned it to me and I just, I took to it. I remember, I remember coming up from school every day and I couldn't wait to, to just strum those three chords that I learned. So high school is when that, when I started to learn how to play music. I went to college and um, just started playing guitars with, with friends in our dorm room or apartments. I do remember the first time that we, it was my friend and I, we played guitar and we found a drummer and a bass player and we met at, he rented a house on Flood Street in Norman. And I remember in the basement, like we'd written the song and we played it together on guitars. And the first time that we heard the bass and drums come in, it was just this incredible first time to, to feel that. In a lot of ways, that's a, that's a high I've been chasing ever since. I, I don't know that I'll hit it again. I mean, and I've played a lot of shows I've been proud of and had a lot of fun at, but 
something about that first time that you have four guys in a basement and the bass and drums and guitars are all happening. And it, it wasn't good, but it was happening. Yeah. And um, it felt like, it just, it felt like magic. Like one and one is three now. Mm -hmm. Now were you uh, singing at that time or were you just playing guitar? I, I, yeah, I did start writing songs right off the bat. Um, the music or the lyrics? Both. Okay, so yeah. like complete songs you were writing them? Yeah, and I don't know why, I'm not sure why I was so drawn to songs and why that was the first thing I did. I mean, you would think I was, um, normally I think people might just start only strumming guitar or, or uh, you know, just playing instrumental music, but right off the bat, I was I was drawn to writing songs. I think probably because I read so much as a kid, reading was so encouraged growing up. I, so I think stories were just naturally um, just in me. Bo lives in Norman by way of Brooklyn, by way of Inola, but he once traveled the U.S. tracking down the ghost of Will Rogers. It was a serious thing. Cut an album for it, filmed a documentary even. It was an undertaking that would make mythologist Joseph Campbell proud, the hero's journey built on departure, fulfillment, return. He went out looking for a symbol in California, New York, Alaska, and he ended up finding himself in maybe Oklahoma. It's not what you look for, it's what you see. I'm not sure exactly what compelled me to, to start writing songs from day one, um, but, but I did. I think when I really started thinking about what it actually means to be a songwriter was, so in 2005, after college, I, uh, I moved to Brooklyn with my band at the time. Why Brooklyn? I followed my girlfriend out there. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, I would have never gone otherwise. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I followed her out there. That's a jump, that's a it jump. It was, it was. Well, you, you talk about, um, you know, writing a script for the first time and then seeing it, and then seeing it out there in the world, or I talk about playing with a band for the first time. I think there's, I think there's something in um, just making that leap, mm. you know, um, that, that just a lot of other things start clicking and falling into place. You know, I, I built a, a small name for myself here before I left, and I would have been comfortable to just, just tread on that, tread with that for a long time. And then you get out there and you're anonymous instantly. And you're also just extremely self-conscious and you're just like, what do, what do I have to offer now? I, I, I'm nothing. Like, it, there's always somebody cooler or better or more talented or anything out here. Mm. And I think that made me start to think about, well, what, what do I have to offer or what is it about me that is only me? And so that made me focus really on where I came from. And I wanted to start writing songs about where I came from and, and, and explore that. And um, so Will Rogers was someone that, he grew up in the same part of Northeast Oklahoma that I did. And I'd always had an affinity for him and I kind of just latched onto him as a muse kind of. Hmm. And um, I started writing songs about his life um, or I, th I thought I was writing about his life. You know, 10 years later, I can look back and I realize I was really trying to write about mine and sort sort through the things that I wanted to talk about, but filtered through, you know, just Will Rogers lens. But, but that was something that I was like, you know, nobody else in Brooklyn is gonna make this record about Will Rogers. This is gonna be my thing. Mm. Um, so it's that kind of combination of trying to just figure out what makes you, you, and focusing on that as a way to distinguish yourself or or not even necessarily distinguish yourself, but as a way to just hone in on what makes you unique. And in, I think by doing so, you can um, just make something more, more compelling and, mm -hmm. and pure and, and honest. I asked him about his connection to the Oklahoma native, actor, political humorist, Cherokee cowboy. Said he'd been a fan as a kid, related by proximity and a river and maybe ideals. As an adult, he recognized that Rogers connected people with his wit and his wisdom. And that's something I find in Bo's music. He leaves the touchstones subtle in some songs and pretty open in others. He's pushing for that connection too. 
the realization we're all just walking home. The only way I got any kind of clarity was to get out for a while. I'm not saying that if you haven't, you won't have any clarity. Right, sure. For me personally, that's how it worked. Right. Um, it allowed me to, to just look at it from a different angle. And it, it definitely allowed me to appreciate it more too. You know, I was out there almost a decade and I, for a long time, I think my wife and I thought we might make this our home. And um, once you kind of start going down that road, you've left your home behind, at least mentally for a mm -hmm. while. And so once you let something go, it's, you're able to look at it a little bit differently. Yeah, I think that was, that was the only way I really could ever develop a perspective, the perspective that I have on it. Mm -hmm. If you could go back right now to yourself as a, as a fledgling songwriter, like at the beginning of the journey, and obviously some of the lessons you're not gonna to get told, you gotta to learn them mm -hmm. the hard way. Mm -hmm. But what's one thing, what's one thing that you would tell yourself, hey, here's some gold, kid. Here's some gold, me. I think you just gotta write. And I think you gotta read. Mm. And then you'll start to get close <laughs> when you're older. <laughs> and then, not that you can't write good, good material when you're younger. My working theory right now is that you can stumble upon it when you're younger, but it's only, you're only gonna get better through, through, through doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a, a, a misconception sometimes with art that it's like this very delicate thing. And a lot of times it's kind of like chopping down a tree. Mm. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. a lot of work. There's a lot of sweat and there's a lot of grind that goes to it as opposed to just some sort of, I'm gonna sit here at this window and wait for like the angels of you know, enlightenment to visit me and inspire well, me. Well, I know. As soon as as soon as I say something, I can instantly contradict myself. I I also believe in that too. I do, but it's you can't. Well, I don't think you can wait for it. You know, I don't know. Let, let's argue about. I know. It. I well, I think you've got to be ready. It, okay, I've thought about it this way. You don't know when it's going to come, but when it comes, if you're not ready, who cares? But if you've been getting ready, if you've been training for it, right. if you've been writing and exercising those muscles, when it comes, you can take advantage of it. And sometimes when it comes, it's so, it's such a compelling and um, powerful thing that you may or may not do it eloquently and it's still gonna come out as this compelling, wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. it, just, it just forces itself. Mm -hmm. It's a little like marriage to me, and, then, and that makes it a little like faith to me because that, I guess, sort of being the primary relationship in my life, but like, there's like romance, but then somebody still has to do the dishes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's that combination. You're looking for the balance of it. You gotta yeah. be ready when it comes. Yeah. Okay, so let's- Yeah, I don't have, I don't, I guess, <laughs> I guess, I guess if I had an answer, I'd be, um, well, nobody's ever had an answer though. No. That's the thing. No. <laughs> we just think we do, I guess. Standing. Bo's open for Dwight Yoakam, and he's a winner of the Woody Guthrie Folk Festival songwriting competition. Not bad for an OU grad whose first band was emulating Jimmy Eat World, and his first real music memory was built on the Dukes of Hazzard theme song. Bo dropped his first album, I Am Haunted, I Am Alive, in 2005 with a band named Cheyenne. He went on to make three albums with that group, had another four on his own. I think, ultimately, what keeps you going is what made you start in the first place, which is that you're drawn to, you're drawn to the art, you're drawn to the music. Um, and when, when a particular event or the circumstances at an event aren't positive, um, and if that's enough to keep you, if, that, if that's enough to deter you from like pursuing the art in the first place, then you, then you were pursuing something else, I think at that point. I think if you're able to keep the keep your eye on the ball, so to speak, um, which is to create a to create art, to create a body of work, ultimately that that's gonna that's gonna kind of transcend the whatever whatever valleys you, you come across. I think, like I know that what I've seen, and I've had conversations about it. Whenever you get the critics, uh, and by critics, I don't mean like critics, critics. I mean like social media or yeah. the cat on YouTube or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, oh, ignore the bad stuff. Well, you, if you ignore the bad stuff, you've got to ignore the good stuff too. I right. think it's got to be internal 
Right. If you start letting those external devices affect the way you view yourself or what you're trying to say. I mean, that's a hard lesson to learn, but you can't pick and choose that, I don't think. I know, and there's, and there's times where constructive, where, where there's been criticism, and I've been able to take it and be like, you know what, that, that person was right. Um, therefore, I'm gonna adjust this or alter that. That's, that's, a, that's a tricky line to walk because you don't want to change what you're about. But, the, at, but at the end of the day, if you're, if you're really just going for adulation and people to congratulate you, you'll probably do something different than what you're compelled to do in the first place. And this is something I've slowly come to realize over the years. I work a job, I raise a family, I have my art, and I've learned over the years that I don't want to compartmentalize those things so much. They're all just kind of, they're all just kind of part of this bigger art project that is just, I guess you would just call it your life that you're working on. And it's, the end goal is way further down the road. And it's not just, I'm successful in uh, my pursuit of art, but I was unsuccessful at work or I was unsuccessful with my family. I, it's all, they all inform and feed each other. As time constraints get more demanding, art has to take more of a back seat or I have to make more compromises, logistical compromises. That's, it's when you start to look at it as just like holistic kind of viewpoint. I met my wife about the same time I started working on films. And when I got married, I felt like, and then further when I had kids, I felt like the pressure was uh, different. Like at this point, like if I'm gonna spend my time doing it, it has to matter. And then also I was honed in because all these other aspects of my life had suddenly become concrete. And then I, it's like laser focus. If I'm going to spend time away, this has to be important and it has to matter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Did you feel that at all? Absolutely. I think before a family and before kids, it was easy to get lost in the possibilities of I could, I could make a movie, I could make this record, I could make that record, I could, I could get into painting, I could get into this. And like you said, it just, it just, it tightens the screws. You got to choose what you're putting your time and effort into. And I, I, you might have found this too, but I think it's made for better art. Yeah. Because it's a clarifying thing. You, you have to zero in on, on what it is. His lyrics and song style remind me a lot of Springsteen, which made doing research on his catalog a little like Christmas morning for a denim aficionado like me. It's got that alt-country Americana vibe, sure, but the comparison shimmers specific in the upbeat pop sensibilities layered with lyrics brimming with the weight of nostalgia hope and regret. It makes sense that his 2019 record, Thunderbird, birthed its own Nebraska-like re-envisioning with a companion acoustic album. One version makes you dance, the other feels like backroading at 3 a.m. with the windows down, gas station coffee in your hand. That's an exciting thing. I, I was comparing it to our first album, the Thunderbird. Is this Son of Thunderbird you're talking about? Is the new one? Thunderbird was the Tigers record, and okay. then I recorded all of those songs acoustic. As Son of Thunderbird? Son of Thunderbird. Okay. Not a Tigers record, that's a, that's a Bo Jennings record. Okay. This next record is a back to a Tigers record. Okay, what's it called? It's called Heavy Light. Okay. That was, a, that was kind of a, an interesting process. And we made a record um, that was eight songs and we thought we were done. And we were talking with um, we intentionally made a short record. And we were talking with um, the label that's gonna release it, and they said, hey, I think this record could use one more song. And I was like, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna think about that. And in the meantime, we were talking about what the record should be called. And my guitar player, Chase Kirby, he was saying, you know, I think a lot of these songs, you know, they're coming on the wake of this kind of wild year that we've all experienced. And I also wrote them um, in the wake of losing my mom a few years ago. So there's just a lot of, um, I don't think it's a downer of a record, but there's a lot of just kind of heavier themes on it. Yeah. And uh, he was just like, you know, I feel like this record's kind of about, you know, what, what it costs to, to live, the cost of living almost. So we were, we were throwing around titles and um, we landed on this concept of 
this light at the end of the tunnel, but it comes at a heavy, heavy cost, a heavy light. And then, so we, we have the title and then uh, we're asked to write another song. And I was like, well, I have a title now, but I don't have a title track. So I went and wrote a title track to, nice. the, to the name of the record. And uh, I, was, I was glad to be asked to do that because it's, it's one of my, it's, it might be my favorite song that, that's on the record. It just felt like the perfect way to like tie it all up. I'm afraid I have no answers. There was a show I remember a few years ago where playing for this, uh, you know, it was a big show, a big theater, sold out, opening for a major artist. And middle of a song, I forget the words to a song I played a hundred times. And instead of powering through, mumbling through, ad adapting, this was a number of years ago, I just stopped the song. And I, I just left that night with my tail between my legs. And it was like, it was just another like gut check. It's like, what, what are you about? What are you gonna do? What do you do in that moment? And I think, I think my mindset in that moment was, it's like a fear-based mindset, you know, like I'm afraid of forgetting the words. I'm afraid of doing this wrong. And I think what we've learned since then, what I've learned since then is, you can't do it wrong. You can forget words all the time and who cares? People aren't there to see a perfect thing. They're there to see a human that they can connect with, you know? And the stakes are human and that, sh that indicate, that communicates that to people, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, it's all just, it's all just educational. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the good and the bad you, you, uh, you learn from it all. Well, like kind of the idea of the journey to me is that you never like, like really get there. It's constant, you know what I mean? It's like a TV show from the 60s that like, they just keep on wagon training, you know what I mean? Like Star Trek, they never retire. They just, kept, they just keep going. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the idea of it to me because every once in a while somebody will ask me or I'll ask someone else about making it. And it's like, what is that? Uh, which I guess leads me to a fairly obvious question, like what is making it to you and have you already made it? Making it could be defined so many ways. I mean, I have, I actually have very little interest in making a living through music um, because for me personally, it would probably, just the odds are that would mean making music I don't care to make. Now, the music I do like to make, if that provided a living, that'd be great, and I would take it. Right. Um, but as it is, I'm able to make a living outside of that, which allows me to make the art and the records that I do make. And again, th this is all for me personally, but it, that's, a, that's kind of a perfect scenario right now. And I mean, you know, to a degree, there, there is value in making things that, that everybody wants to hear. Sure. You know, I'm, I'm not discounting that. I just know, I guess the only way I know how to look at it is I'm making the music that I want to make and that, that, that feels like honest and genuine coming from me. And I, I try to keep it in that, I try to keep it in that lane of, I'm never gonna be on The Voice. I'm not that kind of singer. Um, I'm not gonna be like somebody's lead guitar player. I'm not that kind of musician. So I have, I have limited talents. So what, what do I do with it? <laughs> And what do I what I do with my limited talents is try to just make something that that only I can make is I think where where I've landed. I, I I try to make a record that only that only Bo would make or could make. It's not to say it's better or worse than somebody else's record. It's you know somebody else needs to make the record that only they can make. And right. I think that all kind of adds up to just a way of connecting as humans is is expressing your yourself whatever that means whether it's whether it's an elusive thing like Bob Dylan does or a, an op, open and honest thing like Springsteen does it's still a way of communicating what what you are I can see you there a little ways upstream in his song Vertigrist he's got a line I used to ask all kinds of questions now I just believe I think it's probably half true from humility 
He doesn't seem finished looking. His kind rarely is. Talking with both the Prairie House or sneaking a few day beers at the Midway Deli gave me an afternoon's insight into a man who knows who he is. Insightful, driven, and dry humored, he figured it out. He learned that on his journey, he puts that awareness into his songs, some kind of roadmap maybe, or compass. And like his own experiences might reveal, learning his story might show you something about your own. Bo sings, if you reach out your hand, I can grab it, I just know. But for me to reach it, your other hand must let go. If you want to be successful, it's just this simple. Know what you're doing, love what you're doing, and believe in what you're doing. Will Rogers said that. I think Bo Jennings took it to heart. And I don't know what making it is, but that sounds awful close. When I met you, I had plans. I didn't know I could change. I got a sense you were someone that couldn't be explained. And here I am trying to capture your essence in a verse. All I know is you can work on things Some things they just work You showed me all the magic Flowing through your spine I felt it in your fingertips All the way to mine And I wanted nothing more than to be with you on earth All I know is you can work on things And some things they just work And I wonder if you chose me Or if I stumbled into you Was it etched into a tablet? Was it scribbled in baby blue? Is it supposed to feel like medicine? Is it supposed to hurt? All I know is you can work on things Cause some things they just work I lie awake at night The kids asleep between us Way in the distance between you and I The Volvo and the Prius between the wealthy and the destitute What we get and what we deserve And I wonder if we work on things That really need the work And I wonder if you chose me Or if I stumbled into you Was it etched into a tablet? Was it scribbled in baby blue? Is it supposed to feel like medicine or is it supposed to hurt? All I know is you can work on things, but some things they just work. Trace the connection from my hometown to 